Hi everyone, my name is Vanjit Vashne and I'm an alumnus of Delhi University. First and foremost, I'd like to thank Aid Food Foundation and UNESCO New Delhi Cluster for providing me this amazing opportunity where I interacted with 31 other individuals who brought in different perspectives. My biggest takeaway during these past 40 days is that the sessions enhance my critical thinking ability by amalgamating different perspectives. Today, I'll be speaking about climate change, analysis and road ahead. Here, I won't be using any complex terminology or present um, any specific data set that might put a beginner in a situation where the person cannot understand what I'm trying to say. Rather, I'll start from the scratch and I'll try to keep the things as simple as possible so that any common person who's watching this video can understand what I'm trying to say over here. For this, we'll follow the three-way approach that is problem, context and solution. So I'll be dividing my talk in three parts, answering three different questions, namely, first, what is climate change and why can it be deemed as one of the major challenges that our world is facing today along with its repercussions? Secondly, uh, we'll go on a world tour covering the impact of climate change on various countries around the globe. Also, we'll talk about the impact of climate change on the movement of people and refugees. Also, we'll uh, discuss about the impact of climate change in the Indian context. Thirdly, we'll discuss that what can be the road ahead to deal with this crisis. So firstly, let's try to understand what is climate and what is climate change. So the weather conditions prevailing in a region for a longer duration of time is called as climate. Climate change refers to the change in global or regional climate patterns and major shift in these patterns have been noticed in the late 20th century. The main reason behind climate change is the increased amount of carbon dioxide and other gases like methane, nitrous oxide, etc. With the ever increasing population and the burning of fossil fuels, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is increasing which is the driving factor for the climate change. This climate change crisis has numerous repercussions which can be observed in our day-to-day -day life. A gradual increase in the Earth's overall temperature is being observed. Due to this increase in temperature, the polar caps are melting and resultantly the ocean level is rising. The climate change crisis can be deemed as one of the biggest challenges that our world is facing today because if this is not dealt properly, then the survival on this planet is literally in danger. In other words, we can also say that carbon emissions have put um, our, our world on red alert. Now let's take a world tour evaluating the impact of climate change on various countries. So firstly, we'll start with um, small island nations in the South Pacific. For example, say um, Tuvalu, uh, we have Kiribati Islands, etc. So these nations are about to get submerged in water due to increased sea level, which is happening due to climate change. The people living in these regions are being forced to migrate to safer regions to sustain themselves, which is again creating the refugee problem. So this is how uh, this climate change crisis is responsible for creating new population migration trends. Now, let's talk about countries in the European Union, for example, say France. Cheese and wine represent the French culture. Wine is produced by grapes. Increasing day-to-day -day temperature is not favorable for grape wines, therefore it is affecting the wine production. So this is how climate change crisis is posing a threat to culture extinction. Now let's talk about countries in the Oceania, for example, say New Zealand. Some of the uh, islands uh, of New Zealand have already sunk due to rise in sea level and others uh, are in danger too. So the main agenda is migration due to climate change. Now consider the recent example of Canada. Although Canada is famous for its uh, harsh winters and cold temperatures, but temperatures have been soaring beyond 50 degrees Celsius in the British Columbia region of Canada. So this is how uh, climate change is causing record setting temperatures to become more frequent. Now consider the case of Greenland's ice sheet. It is on the brink of an uh, irreversible tip tipping point uh, Greenland's ice sheet is uh, a colossal slab of frozen water that contains around 8% of world's fresh water. If this sheet melts, it is enough to raise the sea level by 7 meters. Temperatures in the Arctic are rising faster than elsewhere around the globe. 
So what happens is as the ice melts, its height drops. So uh, uh, like as the height drops, so it is exposing uh, to warmer temperatures in the lower down, which speeds up the melting process even further. So this is how the sea level is rising. This, uh, this all can change the weather patterns around the globe. This is uh, what climate change actually means to us. So are you understanding what kind of colossal damage are we looking forward to if this is not dealt properly? Now, I'll talk about the impact of uh, climate change in the Indian context. Cyclone frequency in the Arabian Sea is increasing along with, its in along with their intensity. As oceans soak more than 90% of the heat generated by the greenhouse gases leading to rising water temperatures. Rising sea levels could also boom storm surges from cyclones making them even more deadly and destructive. The Arabian Sea is one of the fastest warming basins across the global oceans. That is the reason we are seeing more cyclones like Tauktai, Nisarg, etc. Also, all of us living in the Indian subcontinent now realize how the weather conditions are crossing extremes in either seasons. So here's a good point that uh, India is the only G20 country which is on track with the Paris climate goals. India is on course in keeping temperature rise below 2 degrees Celsius and is set to reduce emissions by 45% by 2030, which is much higher than 35% target mentioned in the agreement. So in a nutshell, we can say that this crisis is actually bigger than it seems as it affects a considerable amount of population. Globally, the decade to 2019 was the hottest recorded and the five hottest years have occurred within the last five years. So this is the statistics which we have to look at when we talk about climate change. As the land masses have been sinking or are on the brink of sinking, Climate change is actually responsible for creating more refugees, which is adding a cascading effect to the ongoing refugee crisis. Now let's understand some basic terminologies before proceeding towards the solutions. First, carbon credits. So carbon credits are a global scheme aimed at reducing the uh, amount of global greenhouse gases released in the atmosphere. It is best described as a permit that can be purchased by a company so that it can emit a certain amount of carbon dioxide on the understanding that the damage to the environment is being offset by another company elsewhere in the world. Second, carbon market. A carbon market puts cap on the total emissions in a region or a system but allows flexibility to achieve that cap through uh, trading among entities within that region or system. Carbon market explains how uh, pricing emissions can lead to a predictable, cost efficient and ambitious emission reductions. Third, uh, Paris Agreement. So Paris Agreement is an international treaty on climate change that was adopted in 2015. It aims to uh, limit global warming to below 2 degrees Celsius and pursuing efforts to limit it to 1.5 degrees Celsius. It also aims to strengthen countries' ability to deal with the impact of climate change and support them in their effort. Now, I'll be talking about um, climate change and the road ahead. So, uh, I'll be talking about that in points. So, first, afforestation and vertical greenery. That should be adopted everywhere. Given, that, given the fact that we have a limited land area and we need to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases present in the atmosphere, we need to plant more greenery and that too in a vertical alignment. Doing that in a vertical manner along the facade of a building and feature walls will ensure protection and insulation from temperature fluctuations, UV radiations and heavy rain. Secondly, Proper public policies should be implemented across the nations to mitigate the climate change. For example, when I talk about countries like New Zealand, so New Zealand became the world's first country to introduce climate change law for financial firms. Their financial sector will be required to report what impact their investments are having on climate. Now, coming, coming to India, so India has set up an apex body comprising members from 13 key ministries. This apex body will serve as a national authority to regulate carbon markets in India under the Paris Agreement. Third, creating awareness among the masses regarding promotion of renewable energy and sustainability um, 
is is very important because sustainability is the key to future four as the main focus is uh, cutting the greenhouse uh, emissions carbon tax should be implemented worldwide worldwide across nations carbon tax refers to a fee imposed on companies that turn that burn fossil fuels and other non renewable sources of energy fifth when we talk about energy usage nearly 34% of the energy is being utilized and 66% of energy goes to waste either in the form of heat or in other forms so this is where thermoelectric materials come in picture thermoelectric materials are those materials those materials that can convert heat energy into electrical energy and vice versa a main focus should be on devising clean and energy efficient conversion devices so that we can minimize waste energy in the form of heat six extra emphasis should be paid on alternative sources of energy like say uh, solar energy fuel cells etc seven countries like india should increase their budget for research and development sector because environment sustainability is the key to future thank you